Hello! Welcome back to the channel. Today we are learning how to make a daisy chain. I am super excited about this bracelet because it is one of my absolute favorites. I think that it is a wonderful introduction to all of the knots because each flower is on its own. So if you mess up one flower, it's cool because then the next one, you're starting fresh. Let's get into it without further ado. All right, let's get started with the strings. So here is going to be the string that is the center of the flower. Here is the string that's going to be the petals of the flower. And this pink ombre is going to be the um, border or chain. For the longest one, you want about double wingspan. Um, for me, this is about like 112 inches. And then for the petal, you want to do about just one full wingspan, which is about 56 inches. And then for the inner color, you want it to be half of a wingspan. So 26 usually. But the next thing we need to do is get these strings organized. Basically, you're going to fold every string in half. Now that you've folded all of your strings in half, we want to put them together. The thing is with our border color, we want to have one end that has a little bit more than the others. Join it in with the other two. Doesn't have to be perfect. If you get knots like this, um, happens all the time, especially when we're working with strings that are longer. Just generally work from the bottom and separate up. I like to take the one that's on the right side and I just pull it a few inches. It doesn't need to be anything crazy. They'll probably be lopsided at the end, just because that's how it works. For the teardrop loop, we hold it in the center, and so the right side here has my longest, or my longer end of the base string, so I wanna tape it down, tape it right about the middle, with the longest string down, so. For a teardrop loop, we need a forward-backward knot. So our four, I make the figure four, I lift up the strings, the other strings that we're knotting on, pinchers through, grab the string, hold on to these other strings, just to keep them from flying around, and that's the first half. All right, remember every knot goes in two. You need two knots to make a full knot. All right, and then backward is the opposite. I make a backward four, fingers through, I grab on, and I pull it through. And I have a nice little string thing coming along for the ride. Just wants to be included. There, so that is one. So again, forward, it's a four, through, and you pull, Tight. There we go. And then backward, backward four, under, and through. And I want to repeat that. I like to do 15. Beautiful. Now we have the start for our bracelet. So what we do here now, untape, I'll just stick this off to the side save it for later. This is what you want. This is what you want it to look like. All right, nice and pretty here. And then what we can do, I bend it in half. We want our whites to be in the center. All right, here is where we go, not bananas. All right, the knot, it's every knot that one needs to know to make these little flowers. And then the easy part where we do the chain in the middle. All right, so now the white and the white right there. We want to do a forward knot. So here we want to do a backwards knot with this string. All right, so after I do the forward knot, the string that was over here now moves over here, the white one. And here, with this white string, I want to do a backward knot on the yellow. So I do my backward four, pinch through, and gently tug to tighten here. All right, same thing, because it's just a backward knot. Backward four, 
inch through and a good little tug to tighten. This one is a backward forward knot. So we already did our backward. We want now to make the four through here. So this is what's considered a mirrored pattern, which means whatever I do on one side, I'm gonna do opposite on the other side. So I started with a backward knot. Now I'm gonna do a forward knot with this white string onto the yellow string. So a forward, remember that's just two, four, there. Nice and easy. And then we did a backward forward knot over here. So we're gonna do a forward backward knot over here. So that's, we start with this four, that's one, and then we want to go back. There. All right, so now we should have swapped places. The yellow is nicely in the middle and the whites are hanging out with the pink. So with the yellow, we want to do a forward knot. Again, I just tend to knot the left string over the right. That's just me. It doesn't really matter what you do. That's why the yellow strings are so short. They do one knot per flower. <laughs> forward knot. Here. Forward. Forward. Stunning. And then here, again, mirrored pattern, we do the opposite. So it's a backward. Backward knot. Beautiful. And then you can do whatever you like in the middle. Now, just like we do here, we mirror this chain all the way down, do another flower, more chain, flower, more chain, flower, until we're all done. So I have this chain and we're just doing forward, backward knots. So forward, there, and backward. There. And I do about six of these. Try to keep it even, so if you notice you accidentally do one too many, um, just do an extra one on the other side, otherwise things get a little lopsided. I have to like count out loud while I'm doing this because apparently as an adult woman I can't stay focused while I count to six. <laughs> and then the same thing on this side. I think I, yeah, I do backward forward knots technically, but it, it doesn't matter, it doesn't change anything. Um, I'll just demonstrate. I can do a forward, backward. These aren't these aren't nearly as finicky as more complex patterns. More complex patterns, you most definitely cannot mistake a uh, a forward backward knot. And then how many you want to do in between kind of depends on your knot tension. If your knots are a little looser, you might want to do less than six. Um, or if you just like the idea of the bigger bubble, you can do more than six. The middle, we do a forward knot, all right, two, figure four, three, loop, all that fun stuff. There, all right, and then start always. The string that's on the left is now over on the right. And we want the string on the left. It's going to do just a full backward knot. Just a full backward knot. So that's one, two of the same thing. There's a knot in that white string, but it's too tight, so we're not going to worry about that. And then we want to do a backward forward knot to get this string back into the center here. That's what we want. And then it's a mirrored pattern. We do the opposite on the other side. So forward knot here, and then forward, backward. Nice. Now we're matching, and we've got the yellows in the center. So yellow forward here,
backward and you can do a backward with this string or a forward with this string doesn't matter i'm just biased towards the left string i guess just a little faster for me all right this is how we make our bracelets adjustable so they can come on and off so I like to do two separate braids, separating these parts. And then just tie it off with a normal knot. This is just excess string. A lot of times if you're using your um, your full wingspan, you'll have enough extra string. That's what we're going to use to make it adjustable. I flip the bracelet over and tape it down around the middle. And then whichever braid is the longest, that's usually the one that I put um, through the loop. If they're the same, which is very difficult to do, then well done. Pick whatever one you want. And then I cross them right over each other. Then we just tie a normal knot here with that excess string. It just helps to keep them together before we get into the square knot. You're gonna make a knot that goes under the two braids and over the string on the right, and then the string on the right is going to go over the two braids and through the loop that you made. Then we do the opposite. So the string on the right makes the loop, goes under the braids, over the other side, and the left side goes over the braids and through the loop. It's just like our other knots where we need two halves to make a hole. And then keep going with this. I usually do it maybe eight times. It just kind of depends. With those smaller braids, you don't have to do it quite as many times. And then I flip it over and I just do a normal double knot on the back. And then snip off the ends and we're all done. So I grab one braid with my fingers and then the other braid with my other hand to help pull it nice and tight. Well done and thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like down below. Comment if you have any questions and subscribe to the channel for weekly videos. Bye-bye.